Instead of making the ship faster, how about installing some seatbelts? Seatbelts are dead weight. I feel the need for speed. Yes, but I feel the nafty for safety. Oh, fuff. Today's trick, today's effort, is going to be to harvest the seat bracketry off the bottom of this stock TJ driver's seat so that we can utilize it to mount our new PRP seats. What we need for that is the seat brackets, the sliders, and these two cross braces. The cross braces are held onto the seat with four bolts, little tiny bolts, but you cannot access them from with the seat. So we need to disassemble the seat a little bit in order to get any, gain access to these bolts. We also want to collect the factory seat belt. Uh, component so that we can reuse that with our seats for daily driver purposes. First thing we're going to do is disconnect this little bit of fabric so we can get access to the materials that are behind it. This is just a little clip arrangement in the back. And just like that, the seat pays off. Did Penny give us a penny? And we uh, end up with some extra money. Okay, the bolt for the seat belt is right here. This is a Torx uh, T50. I'm gonna start by just taking that out, which will get the seat belt uh, piece released and available to be repurposed. Just like that, we have our seat belt uh, connector along with the necessary wiring so that you can put the seat belt in and not have it sit there and chime at you about not having your seat belt on. Switching to a 13 millimeter socket, there is a bolt up here on the front of the frame. We're going to take out and then at the back, oh, right there, but not physically present. More loose change. And then this one here that is attached to the recliner mechanism. And the front one here on the recliner mechanism. seat over, take out the same set of bolts on the other side.
just like that. The seat itself is removed. Now again, we don't need these side rails. So we're going to go ahead and take them off. And there we have our seat base ready for installation of the PRP adapter kit. Looking at what is unique on the passenger side of this system. Remember on the TJ, you have a situation where the seat slides forward and then tumbles forward to provide more access to the rear seat. In my case, our case, we don't need that tumble forward because we don't have people getting in and out of a back seat it's sort of convenient from the perspective of access to that space. But again, on, my, on this TJ, it's just that space between the back of the seats and the fuel cell, which is not a whole lot of stuff, not a whole lot of space, not a big loss. On the seat base, when you get the seat removed, you have these two cables that went up into the rec recline mechanism for the seat. You see the mechanism here and the two holes that these two cables attach to. So the two cables are doing exactly the same thing in terms of releasing the recliner mechanism. One of these cables goes around and is tied into the uh, seat adjuster. This is your seat slider that allows the seat to move forward and backward. The other loops around and is tied into the mechanism under the seat here. Now this is solidly attached to this rod so that when the rod relationship to the seat base here changes, by virtue of kind of this lever that's down in here, it will cause the seat mechanism to unlock. Again, in the case of this project, neither of those are really necessary or, nece or, or even valuable to us. So we're going to go ahead and delete those. If you are trying to preserve that fold and tumble, you'll need to figure out how to tie things together to the recliner mechanism. But again, that's all this is, is the recliner mechanism on the uh, back of the Jeep. And the correct way of taking that off would have been to just slide it forward as opposed to trying to pry it off. I cracked that there. So that just slides forward. I'm just squeezing the two little plastic tabs here so that it can slide back through the housing to allow me to remove the cables because this is just more stuff and since we're not going to be using it it's just more stuff that's kind of in our way to have to deal with later so kind of just a cleanup kind of activity here for extra pieces that we don't need on the bottom of this passenger base Now we have the passenger base. So the next step in this process is the new seats. Nothing hugely wrong with the old TJ seats other than that they are, well, circa 2004, they were starting to wear out. Um, and I just decided that I wanted safer seats. So the hardest thing to do is to pick seats. I can pick paint color all day long. But seats, there's no place to really go and sit in Mastercraft, Corbo, PRP, any of those. And so finally, at an event, I managed to ask 
a, another driver that had seats I was considering if I could pop up into his, his rig. And that was the only way I got a chance to test these seats and see, hey, I like them. Um, these seats are PRP Enduro Elites. They are the Recline Daily Driver Edition, so they don't have that great big side bolster. Fine for me, I'm not daily driving. And so what we're going to do now is unbox them. Um, we've got the mounts for them. And I also have the 4.2 harnesses for install. Um, as far as colors go, Penny is a custom color. Uh, so I knew there was no possible way I was going to be able to match her color. The second thing I did not want is, although I do like the marine grade vinyl, I didn't want black marine grade vinyl. That makes the most sense given the interior color she has. So I went the opposite direction. Um, as you'll see, these are a very light color. I'm not terribly worried about them staying clean. Uh, marine grade vinyl is very easy to clean, but um, we will see if that's the case. And um, I'm really excited to get these in, so let's get started. What do you think? Uh, well, you went light. And... <laughs> mm -hmm. I did go lighter. Now, I thought this was going to be darker. And then monitor colors being what they are. It's good. So in this, what we have is... Looks like oh, there's a label on the back. Seat comfort systems. PTC heater dual pad 1P waterproof. So that's the heated seat. Okay, need this. That is a switch. Looks like a three-wire harness. That oh, is there's already a switch. Just your switch. So I will be able to use it at Trail Hero if I don't get it hooked up. That's good. This is a harness with a fuse. A hot in the ground and a two pin connector. The pin connector was right over there. And this is a, another harness. It's a three pin connector. And multiple two pin connectors. So the instructions indicate to place the rails on in this particular orientation. There are pictures that show sort of how the orientation goes and then instruct you to reuse the original hardware to mount the adapters to the frame. Now with the slots in here, it's pretty clear that there is some play side to side and the ability to potentially locate the seat to some extent in and out on the base. Knowing that the way this is oriented, this is the front of the vehicle, that really gives you some opportunity to adjust the seat potentially to fit within the uh, space and within the uh, console or around the console. All right, I have a seat for you. Okay. This is probably going to require two people. <laughs> I'm going to suggest putting the seat on its back oh. so that we can work on the base. So we've loosened the bolts up so that we can slide things side to side. And now we're just going to come up here and they'll line them up. Okay, you're on the inside. Do you want to be on the inside or outside? I believe I want to be on the inside. Inside, okay. You know, it might be worth mentioning the actual seats did not come with any hardware. Came with electrical for the heated option, but did not come with any hardware. So. The hardware we are using is actually came with the seat kit or the, the mount kit. So if you don't purchase the mount kit, you're probably not going to see the same hardware. You may have to source your own. So 
So there is adjustability in the connection to the seat base, but there is no adjustability in this uh, connection between the seat and the adapters. So we're going to go ahead and tighten down the seat to the adapter and we'll move the seat base as necessary to clear the console in the vehicle. We can actually access the mount bolts into the adapter with a ratcheting wrench. There's enough room to get your hand under there and get that taken care of. Yeah, they're, they're here and here on the accessible from the outside on this side. And they are not going to be necessarily fun, but they are accessible under the seat from the inside and if the slides look like they're out of alignment they are we were playing around with it last night we'll we'll fix that before it goes in who says i got a recliner i didn't get a recliner and swivel now we need the seat hardware So starting to put these in, one of the things I did was to slide the seat effectively all the way to the rear for the longest legs possible with the idea that it would make it easier to get to these bolts. What I'm observing as we're putting this in place is we look at the relationship between this bolt and this hole tells me the seat needs to come back an inch and a half, two inches. And I see the same with the rear bolt. However, at the back, we see that the seat is now in contact with our brand new roll cage. So that's going to be a limiter when this is all said and done as to how far back the seat can slide. Because the back of the seat will make contact with the cage and that is as far as it goes. Now in the interest of getting this in here, I'm going to slide the seat forward on the sliders and we'll work with it in the forward position. So now we've got the seat slid forward and our bolt holes lined up. This is just a matter of reattaching with the factory hardware. It is a handle. The handle is basically symmetric. There is no hardware. Probably just a press fit like most of these handles are. But I am observing that there is a hole. Do you have any preference? Mm, probably play with it. No, I would rather it face forward. Wow, these are comfy. I do feel like I'm sitting to this side. And I'm not straight. I didn't even notice. In front of this. I'm just looking at your hands. Yep. Oh, do we need to take those screws in the back out first? They didn't come out to take the console out. Oh, interesting. So this 